In this video, we will count down the top three times animals killed and eight soldiers or sailors during World War II. Number one is the sinking of the British troop ship Nova Scotia off the coast of Cape St. Lucia in South Africa. On November 28, 1942, the British troop ship Nova Scotia was torpedoed by a German U-boat 50 kilometers off the coast of Cape St. Lucia, South Africa. Around 750 troops perished. About a quarter of them were killed by oceanic white tip sharks. Only 196 survived. The Nova Scotia had been ferrying back and forth from Durban up the east coast of Africa to the Suez Canal. She was torpedoed by a German U-boat 177 while carrying 134 British and South African guards, 773 Italian prisoners of war, and 118 crew on board. The ship sank just seven minutes after the Germans fired three torpedoes, throwing the survivors into the shark-infested water where they had to desperately cling on to anything that floated. The German U-boats surfaced to try to discover what ship they had hit and were greeted with mayhem. Hundreds of men were floundering in the water and screaming for help. Having received no orders to help, the Germans instead took two men from the water for intelligence reports, then dived away, leaving the rest to drown or be eaten by sharks. The next day, another ship, the Portuguese frigate Alfonso de Albuquerque, came to the rescue, but many were already dead. The Portuguese ship safely rescued 192 people from the water. Later, two survivors turned up on the shore, having floated on a raft without food or water for two weeks. Only 196 survived. This was the worst South African maritime loss and mass shark attacks during World War II. Number two is the Ramri Island Crocodile Massacre. Are saltwater crocodiles man-eaters? Yes, the saltwater crocodile is one of two crocodile species that regularly prey on humans. Saltwater crocodiles can grow to lengths of 23 feet or 7 meters and weigh more than a ton or 0.9 metric tons. And unlike alligators and smaller crocodiles, saltwater crocs will aggressively defend their territory and snack on the occasional human. Every year, dozens of people are killed by saltwater crocodiles. How common are saltwater crocodile attacks? In 2015, there were 180 total crocodile attacks in Southeast Asia, coastal India, and Oceania, the regions where saltwater crocs live, and 79 of those were fatal. In early 1945, as part of the Pacific War during World War II, Allied forces pinned down 1,000 Japanese soldiers in a mangrove swamp off the coast of Burma, now Myanmar. Only 20 of the Japanese fighters made it out alive. The rest were reportedly eaten alive by hordes of prehistoric-looking saltwater crocodiles. This horrific the horrific event is known as the Ramri Island Crocodile Massacre, and in 1968, the Guinness Book of World Records awarded it the dubious distinction of most human fatalities in a crocodile attack at roughly 900 dead. The gruesome description was written by Bruce S. Wright, a Royal Canadian Lieutenant Commander credited with inventing the idea of frogmen units, scuba diving soldiers who could spy on the enemy from the water. In 1945, Wright took part in the Joint British and Indian assault on Ramri Island, which the Allies hoped to capture from the Japanese and use as a strategic airfield. As the leader of his frogman unit, Wright's job was to perform reconnaissance, but he also spent hours documenting the local sea life, which included sharks and octopi. After the war, Wright became a respected wildlife biologist and author. If you're enjoying this video, then smash the subscribe button. And the number one time animals killed and ate soldiers and sailors during World War II is when the USS Indianapolis was sunk by a submarine and its sailors and crew were attacked by sharks. Japanese submarines were not the only thing lurking underneath the waters of the Pacific. The worst shark attack in history befell the crew of the USS Indianapolis after completing a top-secret mission. After delivering components of the nuclear bombs that would end the war, the ship was ambushed by Japanese submarine Y-58. Of the six torpedoes, two hit their mark and sank the USS Indianapolis within 12 minutes. Of the 900 survivors of the sinking, only 316 were rescued. There were three other ships that could have responded to the USS Indianapolis's distress call, but they ignored it. Of the 900 initial survivors, it is estimated that up to 150 died from shark attacks. The USS Indianapolis had delivered the crucial components of the first operational atomic bomb to a naval base on the Pacific island of Tinian.
On August 6, 1945, the weapon would level Hiroshima. But now, on July 28, the Indianapolis sailed from Guam without an escort and prepare for an invasion of Japan. But shortly after midnight, a Japanese torpedo hit the American ship in, blowing almost 65 feet of the ship's bow out of the water and igniting a tank containing 3,500 gallons of aviation fuel into a fierce fire, shooting several hundred feet into the sky. Then, another torpedo from the same submarine hit closer to midship, hitting fuel tanks and powder magazines and setting off a chain reaction of explosions that effectively ripped the Indianapolis in two. The ship sank in just 12 minutes. Of the 1,196 men aboard, 900 men were able to make it into the water alive. Their ordeal, what is considered the worst shark attack in history, was just beginning. As the sun rose on July 30th, the survivors floated in the water. Life rafts were scarce. The surviving sailors searched those that had died floating in the water and secured their life jackets. Hoping to keep some semblance of order, survivors began forming groups, some small, some over 300 in the open water. Soon they would be avoiding exposure, thirst, and sharks. The sharks were drawn by the sound of the explosions, the sinking of the ship, the sailors thrashing, and the blood in the water. Though many species of shark live in the open water, none is considered as aggressive as the oceanic white tip. Reports from the Indianapolis survivors indicate that the sharks tended to attack live victims close to the surface, leading historians to believe that most of the shark-related casualties came from oceanic white tips. During the first night, the sharks focused on the floating dead. But as time went on, more and more sharks appeared. As the sharks turned their attention toward the living, especially the injured and the bleeding, sailors tried to quarantine themselves away from anyone with an open wound. And when someone died, they would push the body away, hoping to sacrifice the body in return, they would be spared from a shark's bite. Many survivors were paralyzed with fear. One group of survivors made the mistake of opening a can of Spam. But before they could taste it, the scent of the meat drew a swarm of sharks around them. They got rid of their meat rations rather than risk an attack from the sharks. The sharks fed for days with no sign of rescue for the men. Navy intelligence had intercepted a message from the Japanese submarine that they had torpedoed the Indianapolis. The message described how it had sunk an American battleship along the Indianapolis's route. But the message was disregarded as a trick to lure American rescue boats into an ambush. In the meantime, the Indianapolis survivors learned that they had the best odds in a group and, ideally, in the center of the group. The men on the outer edge of the groups, or worse, alone, were the most susceptible to the sharks. As the days passed, many survivors were overwhelmed by the heat and thirst or suffered hallucinations that compelled them to drink the seawater around them, a sentence of death by salt poisoning. Those who drank the seawater would slip into madness, foaming at the mouth as their tongues and lips swelled. They often became as greater threat to the survivors as the sharks circling below. Many dragged their fellow sailors underwater with them as they died. After 11 a.m. on their fourth day in the water, a Navy plane flying overhead spotted the Indianapolis survivors and radioed for help. Within hours, another seaplane returned to the scene and dropped rafts and survival supplies. When the pilot saw men being attacked by sharks, he disobeyed orders and landed in the shark-infested waters and then began taxiing his plane to help the wounded and stragglers who were at the greatest risk. A little after midnight, the USS Doyle arrived on the scene and helped pull the last survivors from the water. Of the Indianapolis's original one, 196-man crew, only 317 remained. Estimates of the number of sailors who died from shark attacks range up to almost 150. It's impossible to be sure, but either way, the ordeal of the Indianapolis survivors remains the worst maritime disaster in U.S naval history. Click here to watch the next video. Also, please smash the subscribe button and if you made it this far, click on the like button.